okay vibes okay <laughs> hey y'all hopping in here little voiceover narration for this video because i think it's going to be super helpful as we jump into these knotless braids so let's go ahead and get into it a couple things before we get started though first off i will not be showing how to prep um, your hair before braids, there's plenty of videos out there and I felt that a little short description here would be enough for you to kind of know the deal when it comes to blowing out your hair before getting braided. The second thing we won't be talking about today is how to seal your ends at the end of braiding. I decided not to show this part because honestly by day four, yes y'all, took me four days to do these braids because I took breaks. But I took breaks and I just didn't feel like filming anymore at that point. <laughs> so seal your ends with boiling hot water or very, very hot water and you should be good to go. If you are still confused or need help, YouTube it. Now that that's out the way, let's get into this video. So first things first, you want to prep the hair that you're going to be braiding with. A huge time saver here is to use pre-stretched, pre-feathered, pre-everything. <laughs> and this is the brand that I like to use. And I love it because it's super soft, has a nice shine, and almost gives you that real hair, quote unquote, feel. And so I use this and I basically piece this apart as I go. I try to do a few sections at a time so that I can just grab and go as I braid. You want the pieces that you set aside to be about the width of your standard braid just so you can see how thick you're making your braids because essentially whenever you go in to do each braid, you're gonna split this one section again. So it's nice to be mindful of how much hair you're using so that you can make all of your braids around around your head nice and even as in the same size so they look really neat. Parting your hair is also super, super essential in getting this hairstyle to look really neat and clean. I'm gonna actually tell y'all kind of my process on how I even tackle parting. So I actually start in the back of my hair. So as you can see, the back of my hair ain't that pretty. <laughs> and for me, I don't really mind that because I'm not doing this for nobody else. I'm trying to just use this as a protective style. And y'all, we all at home, okay? So anyway, start in the back and then make my way to the front two sides and then the very front of my hair. I leave the bulk of the back for the last bit um, because based on how many days I'm having to spread braiding over. So as I mentioned, I spread the braiding for this style over four days but that was because i was moving um, my house and also taking care of my daughter you may not take that long to do your braids or if you simply want to only braid for a few hours at a time this is a great way to do that i also wanted to mention that a trick to making your braids look even fuller than they are is to braid over a part from the layer lower than it so as you can see here there's braids that actually fall on top of the parts so where my bare scalp is showing basically as long as you do your best to cover those scalp areas that are exposed with another braid from above it you should be fine i also recommend paying very close attention to the uniformity of your braids that also makes a huge difference how tight you're braiding, how loose you're braiding. There's a lot of little things that do come into play with doing knotless braids or braids in general, but especially these knotless braids because they're so much work, honestly. They're a lot of work, but so worth it if you can actually get the time and the energy to knock them out. So I like to part in threes, so I will pull off a section and then I will split that section into three and then twist the other two parts that I've already pre-measured out so that everything ends up being really even and the same size. 
Now this is the part that gets tricky and I'm gonna show you very, very slowly and multiple times how to actually do the knot list aspect of this braid. So you're gonna start off by braiding your hair regularly uh, and then you're going to add in a bit of hair. One of those pieces that we initially sectioned, we're gonna split that piece into three again. So I'm using one of those three a very very small section basically the same width as my other two legs is what this section is I'm going to use it and add it to these two fingers right here every single time you add hair to your braid you're going to add it right here where these um, two fingers are the pinch the thumb and the pointer finger always think about that because then you know that you're adding hair in the right spot and at the right time you're gonna add your first piece of hair at the top and you're going to throw over the other side of the hair. So one piece is going to be added to your pinched fingers and the other piece is gonna go away from the braid. So I like to throw mine over my head basically because it gets it out of the way. Once I braid that a couple times, I'm going to grab that old piece of hair that we threw over my head and add that back into my pinched fingers and braid again as normal you're going to repeat this process over and over and over again but that's basically it it's very simple but it takes coordination so i'll show you it one more time you're going to start braiding regularly grab your small piece of hair you're going to throw one side over your head you're going to pull the other side into your thumb and your pointer finger where they're pinched you're going to continue braiding regularly a couple times then you're going to grab that piece again that we flipped over our head and pull it into the braid and braid regularly now another note I want to add to this section is make sure that you are braiding in the same way all over your head. So some people braid overhand, some people braid underhand. I would suggest choosing one or the other when you start your braids because again, you want your braids to look really, really neat and precise and that requires you to essentially do the same exact cadence of thickness of your braid, of how much hair you're adding to that braid, and adjusting based on how thick your hair is. So again, you have to be very mindful of how big your sections are because the more uniform you make your sections when you're parting in the first place will help you make sure that your braids are also the same width and length and all that good stuff. Now to get even more neat and precise and meticulous, I will go into my braids that have a little bit of hair sticking out here and there. I will go in and I will clip those little pieces of hair that are sticking out. Um, I just do this so that my braids look even neater. Uh, you may or may not need to do this, but I like to add this in here just in case. Then I'm gonna show you all how I sleep with my braids. This is exactly how I wear my scarf at night, how I tie my scarf, and that is it. I don't add any other products or anything to my hair because my scalp gets really itchy. And so if I use too much edge control or I use too much mousse or oils or anything like that on my hair, I wanna wash my scalp faster. So I try not to use too much product. I will add oil in about a week or so after having these braids in. And by all means, please watch this tutorial as many times as you need. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see a video about how I maintain my braids or how I refresh them or wash them. Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Check me out on Instagram, YouTube, everywhere on the internet. And until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.